Hi everybody, I'm here to talk to you about Unicraft or how to build fast specialized unikernels the easy way. Uh, my name is Felipe Wisi, I'm a chief researcher at NEC Europe's uh, laboratory in Heidelberg, Germany. So one really good way to obtain high performance is through specialization. And that can be in terms of software where you can build fully customized stacks to run certain languages such as OCaml or JavaScript or in hardware where we increasingly seeing cards dedicated to particular workloads like AI workloads. In the field of virtual machines, specialized virtual machines are called unikernels. And the goals of uh, unikernels are basically three. One is that they should be easy to build and run. This hasn't always been the case in past projects, including some of ours. Uh, there should be easy or no application porting because something that runs fast but is not running useful applications is not very useful at all. And of course, they should provide great performance. So just to give you a little taste of what a unikernel can actually do, uh, you can have fast start, stop, and migration times. And there's been papers showing that a unikernel, which is essentially a virtual machine, can start in as little as two milliseconds. You can have very low memory footprint, so you can have actual applications such as um, SQL, Lite, and so forth running in a few megabytes or less. Uh, you can have high density. Because you're consuming little memory, you can start them up quickly. Uh, there's been papers showing that you can sort of consolidate as many as 8,000 guests on a single x86 server. And, of course, you get high performance. You can get high throughput, such as 300,000 requests per second out of a single core for Nginx uh, workloads. The final one is that it has security features. I'm not really going to go into these right now. Okay. So, just to give you a little uh, explanation of what a unikernel actually is. Uh, in many cases, you know what your target application is. Imagine it's a web server. But the really easy way to deploy this is to take a general purpose OS such as Linux and a Ubuntu distribution, for instance. And of course, it runs the web server fine. But under that, you're running a bunch of third-party libraries, even though your web server only needs maybe these two that are colored. Under that, you have OS libraries, and the same thing applies. You only need a few of these, but you get all of them. And the kernel has a lot of modules and functionality that you don't need for your web server, but it's all still there. And what we'd like to do is if we could somehow magically grab those colored parts and build a custom stack just for that web server. And that's called a unikernel. But in the past, doing this transformation required lots of development time, lots of uh, handwork. So the design principles for Unicraft, uh, one was to create a fully modular kernel that would be easy to customize and to make these software stacks. And the second one would be to provide high performance specialized APIs to further improve performance. So regarding the first one, the first question is, why don't we just use Linux? And to do this, we built a dependency graph of the Linux kernel uh, between the major modules. And if you see a line between two labels, this means that there's a dependency between those two modules. And the number above it in blue means how many dependencies there are between the modules. And what this is trying to show graphically is that while you can in principle remove some of these modules if your application doesn't need it, in practice, it's very difficult to do. Instead, Unicraft is built from scratch to be fully modular. Um, this is a small graph to show uh, the same thing, uh, in this case, a Hello World application or Nginx running on Unicraft, and you can see that the modules and dependencies are much less. So why don't we do it with existing Unikernel projects instead? Well, they require significant expert work to build. Uh, they are often non-POSIX compliant, so even if they're good, you cannot run Nginx, SQLite, like these applications that people want to run. And even when you can, many of these projects are still monolithic. The kernel itself, while smaller, it is difficult to uh, pick and choose pieces from it. Unicraft is built from scratch with borrowing to overcome these problems. What about specialized APIs? Just to give you an example of what I mean, imagine you have an application that is uh, obviously compiled against the libc, like glibc. And it wants to do some networking. It's probably going to go through POSIX sockets and network stack. And eventually below all of that, maybe a high performance API. 
Unicraft makes it easy for you to go uh, through all these layers and skip it all the way directly to the High Performance API because per perhaps all you only need is UDP. This is the Unicraft architecture. You have the application at the very top. Uh, you have a layer of glibcs. In this case, we support muscle and newlib. Under that, you have a POSIX compatibility layer, and I'll come back to that later. And below that, you have the main parts of uh, Unicraft, and the black boxes are the actual APIs. So for instance, uh, mimicking the example I gave above, if you want to do high performance networking, you can plug in directly into UK NetDev and go, don't go through the POSIX socket layer. Uh, likewise, if you're, for instance, interested in having very fast uh, block access, you can forego going through the VFS uh, layer and going directly to UK block dev. And uh, Unicraft also supports, for instance, the UK Adlock API that allows you to plug in different memory allocators, and we support five different ones as of uh, this presentation. So going back to the goals, the first one is that it should be easy to build and run. And what we're trying to do here is to uh, cater to that in three ways. The first one is we have uh, a tool called Craft that wraps around the, the build tool so that it, it's kind of easy to build all these images. Uh, in terms of deployment, we have uh, an early integration with Kubernetes where you use kubectl and the standard dashboard. And then it makes it easy to just deploy all these uh, all these unikernels without having to modify or do anything different with Kubernetes itself. And then obviously you wanna monitor once these unikernels are deployed and with that we are supporting Prometheus. So on the build side, uh, is it easy to build these things? So nothing better than the little demo. So here we're gonna use the craft script I mentioned. We're gonna say, I wanna build Nginx in this case and we're gonna name the unikernel my Nginx uh, unikernel and then the script is gonna go and retrieve all the source files it needs to build, uh, both Unicraft, uh, the custom stack, and Nginx on top of that. When it's done, it's gonna launch it. In this case, uh, we chose KVM. And then you can see that it booted really quickly and it's up and running. To make sure it's correct, we're gonna run curl to retrieve a static web page on the address that we were given. And there you see that it worked. We're gonna do it a second time and there a third time and we're done. Okay, so uh, here's a little screenshot about the deployment. I mentioned Kubernetes and the dashboard. This is Unicraft running in the standard Kubernetes dashboard. And then on the monitoring and Prometheus side, here's another screenshot uh, using Grafana uh, in retrieving statistics, real-time statistics from a Unicraft unikernel. So the second goal was that it should be easy or there should be ideally not even any application porting to get a standard applications running on, on Unicraft. And this has to do obviously with how POSIX compatible you are or how much you look like Linux, uh, so to speak. And we have two approaches. One we call auto porting. Uh, this is where we assume that the sources of the application are open and we can build with the application's native build system but we do it against uh, the muscle libc library. We then link the resulting object files into the Unicraft build system. We have our own ported muscle library. Muscle, of course, expects syscalls. So we have a syscall shim layer that traps those. And under that, we have our own implementations of the syscalls that link to all the Unicraft kernel modules. The other approach is binary compatibility in which we assume that the sources are closed, we just get an, an ELF. And for that, we have a module that is an ELF reader and loader. Of course, this is going to have syscall. So again, we redirect to our syscall shim layer and to our syscalls and then onto the actual Unicraft modules to run things. So it all boils down to how much syscall support you have. So this part of Unicraft. So Linux has in the order of, let's say, 350 syscalls currently, and Unicraft has about 160 syscalls implemented so far. So what does that mean? Can we actually run applications? And the answer is yes, we can. And we did an analysis. We took the 30 Debian popcorn most popular apps, and we have them in this graph on the x-axis with the names of them. And on the y-axis, we have the percentage of syscall support we have in Unicraft for them. 
and if it's supported, we plot it in green. So you can see that most of the graph is green. We can already support several of these applications. And then the other colors show what would happen if we supported just a few more syscalls. But we started noticing that even some of these bars that are not fully green, the application was actually correctly running. And we wanted to look into why. And here's a little snippet. Uh, in this case, I believe is uh, from, from Redis that says, uh, you know, if you don't have this syscall called get, get our limit, then default to some other number. So there is resiliency in application code such that when you don't have the syscall, the application still runs. So we wanted to investigate a bit more how much of this happens in actual application code. And we did a, a little survey. In this case, I'm showing five applications, Redis, Nginx, Memcached, SQLite, and HAProxy although we have been extending this study to a lot more applications, to see how many syscalls do they really, really need in order to correctly run. So what we're doing here is we're tracing, as we're running those applications, official benchmarks and suites, what syscalls are actually used. And what we're doing is we're doing a couple of things. We're saying, what happens if the syscall is not there? What happens if we return enosys? We say it's stopped, we don't have it or what happens when we return a success value, but we don't actually do any work. And just to show you an example, if we take uh, Nginx, where you'd think that we need over 100 syscalls to get it running, in actuality, if you look at the dark purple area, which says dynamic required, we're more in the order of 20 or 30 syscalls that are actually required to run uh, the benchmark and about 50 to run the full suite. So I'm not gonna go over the full details, but the takeaway message is that in actuality, you don't need as many syscalls as you, as you think to actually support an application. The final requirement was of course, great performance. And just to show you a few metrics, uh, the first one is uh, boot times. And here we're showing different VMMs uh, on the X axis and then on the Y axis, the total boot time in milliseconds. Uh, if you take st standard chemo, and here, by the way, we're splitting the time that, that the VMM takes versus how long it takes the Unicraft VM guest uh, to boot, it takes about 38 milliseconds. Most of that is, of course, taken by the VMM. If you add a, a, a virtual NIC, then it takes a little bit more time. If you then take chemo and micro VM, which is a faster target, uh, then you get nine milliseconds, but you get the best times with something called Solo 5 or, or Firecracker in, in the order of three milliseconds. What about memory requirements? Uh, here we plot Unicraft first on the x-axis versus other unikernel projects and, and container technologies and also Linux. And uh, the minimum memory requirements in megabytes in the y-axis. And very briefly, you can see that uh, Unicraft requires anywhere from two to seven megabytes to run real world applications. Uh, compared to something like a Linux based unikernel called Lupine, which takes 20 megabytes. What about actual throughput? We measured Nginx throughput in this case. Once again, on the x-axis, we have a bunch of different unikernel projects, but also Linux, uh, both native and on KVM. And we're measuring requests per second in the thousands. So as a baseline, we take Linux uh, running on KVM with about 100,000 requests per second. Uh, Linux native, so bare metal is 175,000 requests per second. and Unicraft is up here at about 290,000 requests per second. There's a lot more information about Unicraft if you want all the gory details. We had a Eurosys Best Paper Award given this year, so I encourage you to go read it over there. We also have an accompanying repo that has all of the artifacts, so you can go and reproduce the results if you want. We've also, this is an open source project. If I haven't mentioned that, it's part of the, the Linux foundation. And so you can go check it out on, on GitHub or on our website, unicraft.org. Uh, we've been having some nice star growth, which is what I'm showing here. So we're always happy to have uh, newcomers if you're interested. And just to end, uh, we believe that now with Unicraft, high performance POSIX unikernels are now a reality. And uh, I'd be happy to uh, sort of keep following the channels. If you have further questions, I'll, I'll be chatting on you on that and uh, any other 
uh, further sessions if you if you have any questions. Otherwise, I encourage you to come to unicraft.org and you can drop us a line there. You can find the code there. Everything's open source. And with that, thank you very much for all of your time. Mm -hmm.